A year or so ago, my grandnephew and I bought this 16-foot uh, cruising canoe, two-person, and it's uh, been very nice. We enjoy it. But I decided I wanted to make it into a, an outrigger trimaran or canoe moran. I did a little sketch up, but I'm not very good at sketch up yet. So there's uh, this is basically what the armors will look like. Uh, they're fairly substantial. Uh, the, the inboard side is curved, the outboard side is absolutely straight like the old Hobies, which will then provide uh, anti-leeway and I won't have to bother the leeboards. But as you can see, there's quite a few curves on this. And this is going to be done in uh, Luan. Uh, it has a, uh, a curve to the side, also a curve to the rock, quite a rocker. It's actually a 50% rocker. So that has to be uh, cut out. Uh, and the uh, the outboard side or the inboard side of the hull has to be cut out with the uh, with the curve, and that's nicely done on the Vancer, of course, as an example of that. <clears throat> that would be fine if there uh, there weren't some other faults that I made that day. One of them is poor tool maintenance, which resulted in this result. That's blood, and that's my blood. Uh, this is an old bandsaw. It's nearly 40 years old, and I have gotten the habit over the years of just leaving the guides up uh, and, and cutting with a half-inch blade. Now, that's fine, except I've also lost the guard. And what happened was something got caught, something fell, and disregarding the, the, the one rule you have when working with power tools is if it falls, let it fall, I grabbed for it. And as you can just see just now, I went right into the brain. Here's where the guide should have been, of course, all the way down, just with a, 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 a quarter of an inch above the work, and the guard should have been on there. But the guard is missing. I don't know what's happened to it, so I leave it up. And what happens is my arm went right into it. And uh, it's quite a, it was, uh, as the doctor said, a terrible wound. It was one millimeter from the bone. Those little shreds you see on the blade, those are shreds of me, are shreds of my arm. This is the arm, as it was shortly after the accident. The accident took place on July 28th, uh, and it is now September uh, 11th, uh, 12th rather, and I'm three weeks into six months of therapy. The wound is healed, but I have six months of therapy to get my fingers moving. Uh, when, all, when all the tendons are cut, they don't move too well. There are only six tendons in, this, in the arm, but he had to make eight repairs. Now this, uh, th this came about through three basic reasons. One, I had lost focus. Uh, sort of other medical issues were occupying my mind. And I wasn't focused on the, on the task. And it wasn't going very well. So I said, okay, well let me just pack it up and do it another day. Oh, well, but let me just cut this one more on my side out. Well, that one didn't work out too well as you can see. Also, poor tool maintenance. That those guards should have been down, the guards should have been on, and that's the, end, that's the end of it. So poor tool maintenance was the second thing. And the, fourth, the third thing is complacency. Now I've been working with tools like this for 60 years, and I've been working with these tools for nearly 40 years. And you get complacent. You start to, to skip safety uh, uh, provisos, and, and the next thing you know, this happens. So those three things contributed to this completely avoidable shop accident. Now I'm going to have to pay for this over a long period of time and uh, and that's just the result of lack of focus and concentration, poor shop maintenance and uh, shop uh, tool maintenance and uh, complacency. So watch out for those three things because they will hurt you.